What's up guys? So we have about six new knives to check out for the first time. Starting it off, we have this new little utility blade from Nine Tie EDC. You guys might remember I, I had a pocket knife from Nine Tie EDC, actually a few different ones of all different colors that were replaceable blades, but they were regular blade shapes, um, which were really cool. Oh, they were actually pretty popular. This is just a little utility blade, but what's cool about this is it's using a crossbar lock on a little utility blade, and it has internal stop pins. The internal stop pins are going to help with the side to side, which this thing is rock solid, and it's also on bearings, so it's also very, very smooth. The crossbar lock is a very strong locking mechanism, so theoretically, this is actually a pretty cool little package, you know, for somebody that does use a utility blade. Now, it's very easy to take the blade out. You just unspin that right there, pull that out, and then push this way on the blade, which kind of pops this little tab out, and you pull. And then when you put it back in, same thing, just kind of push that to the side, line that up. And it does come with a little tool that you can use to, to tighten it tighter or, or to loosen it. Um, I would just hand tighten it, but you could do that. And it's also like a little keychain with a bottle opener. It's got a Phillips. Um, what else is that? It's got a flathead. It's got a tail. <laughs> uh, it's, you know, it's got a hex head. It, it, you know, it's got a bunch of little things on there. And it also comes with a nice little stack of blades, which is really cool because, you know, Obviously, you're going to need to replace the blade. That is the point. And, uh, you know, with a little knife like this, you know, it, it's obviously compact. You know, it's got a deep carry clip. Um, the action's cool, so, it's you know, it's fidgety. But more than anything, you know, it, it's just a little work knife. You know, it's something that if you're working in a factory or wherever you work, you know, you always have a razor sharp edge. And another thing, I should have said this, in like most utility blades, only this much of the blade hangs out. With this one, you have all of this edge. So you actually have a bit more cutting edge. Now, yes, this does ruin the geometry a little bit when you're trying to slice, but you can absolutely slice with it for sure. You know, it'll make it over it depending on the material though, I guess. But G10 scales, you know, like I said, stainless steel uh, deep carry clip that is inset with flat screws. It does have a little hidden lanyard, but yeah, very cool. You know, it's a, a nifty little idea. We've seen a lot of these replaceable bladed knives. Next is the new CJRB Hectare. <laughs> don't know the name. Now, there's a lot of things I love about this knife, but there's one thing that I don't like, and we'll talk about it here in one second. We have a RPM9 steel, great steel. It's an affordable steel. It's artisan slash CJRB steel. Then we have a G10 handle with steel liners, deep carry clip that is reversible, and a crossbar lock. It is on bearings. You can feel it's on bearings. And, you know, it does operate pretty good. It's very ergonomic. I can choke up. Uh, these are very neutral ergos. So, you know, no matter what direction you're wanting to be in, it will work really well. But my one little issue is this little nub right here. It's in the way of the hole. Like, I, yeah, I can do it. So let me be clear. I, I can flick it all day. But it's like I'm, I'm wedging just this little piece of skin in there to get to it and i would prefer to just be able to really get in i mean i can it, it's kind of weird it feels tight it feels like you're not going to do it but then it's pretty easy to do now the thumb flick i can i can do it but you know again i'm, I'm kind of wedging my finger in there to do it now you could also just use the lock to but i would prefer if this little nub was just knocked off so that it would be just easier to get to. Anyways, pretty cool little knife though. And you know, I think maybe for other people, it might be, be you know, great because maybe they don't have as big a hands as me. And like I said, you know, I can still easily, obviously I haven't failed it once. So it's just, you know, it's just, uh, you know, something that for me personally, you know, I, I don't want to have to wedge my finger in there to get it. It's not bad, but, you know, it is what it is. Rock solid lockup. Nice, strong locking mechanism. Love the blade shape. Drop point blade. Uh, beautiful knife, man. I love the look of it. Now, one more CGRB, and I'll be showing this in more videos. 
because one, you guys already know probably if you watch the channel that I love the Echo. This is the CJRB Echo, but this is a premium one. This one's a titanium one with contour titanium scales with this lava flow fat carbon fiber, titanium mill pocket clip, button lock action, S90V blade steel, Ray Laconico design. Yeah, I love it. I love this blade shape. It's like a, it's like a, um, a long sheep's foot blade. And I love the swedge, the satin finish. This is kind of a, it's a very fine satin. So it's almost not a mirror satin, but you know, you can see it's a very fine satin. The titanium, you can see this little chamfer around the edge is really cool. Um, there's, uh, you got the reverse flick, thumb flick, which this hole's easy to get to. Then you also have this front flipper that works great. Very easy to get to no matter how you're doing it. It works. Very, very ergonomic. That was the thing that made me fall in love with this knife, the original one or the budget one, because there is the budget one, then there's the, the semi-premium one, and then there's you know this one. So, or maybe even another one, actually. I think they have a liner lock one, too. There's a lot of versions of this. But because it does this swell back here, where it swells right there, I'm telling you, when you get it in hand, you realize, like, oh my goodness, that is so so comfortable so you know it just makes for a phenomenal edc now this particular one my detent is a little bit lighter than i probably would prefer i mean it works good but i would probably take the spring out and stretch it eventually you know because hey if you have too light of a detent then you just take the little spring out that's inside there take the scale off there's a little spring in there and you just stretch it put it back and then the detent will be stronger. Now, if your detent is too strong, take that spring out and compress it. So, you know, it's pretty easy to tune a detent with button locks. So we have three more and the first one is the Trivisa Andromeda. Now this reminds me a lot of the Baby Banter. They're basically the exact same size. Now this has a hole deployment instead of a thumb stud deployment, um, but they have a lot of similarities. This one's also in 14C28N. You guys know I love that steel. I think this is a good looking blade shape. I love that swedge. You know, it's kind of like a modified sheep's foot or modified drop point. This one has purple G10, but it does come in different colors. Good access to the lock bar, reversible deep carry clip, and it does have T8s except for that clip screw. Very, very smooth. The whole deployment's pretty easy to get to for such a little compact knife. The detent's a little bit on the lighter side, but, you know, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, you can't front flip it. Uh, well, you can, but it's not easy. <laughs> uh, the jimping's just not sharp enough. But the blade, you know, it, it's got good geometry. You can technically get a full four-finger grip. So... For the people that like these little fifth pocket knives, or maybe you live in a place that, um, you know, you can't carry large knives, this might be a great option. And it works great for lefties, but, you know, like I said, you can get a full four finger grip. So if you did have to bear down on something, you know, light, <laughs> um, and what I mean is like, you know, obviously you're not going to be doing anything crazy with it, but you know, if you had to cut something up pretty quick, you could, and the pinch grips are obviously going to be amazing. This is, you know, a, I can just look at it and tell you it's a very useful little design. Um, you know, just whether or not it's your size is going to be, I guess, the, the biggest thing. As far as negatives go, you know, the only thing I can say is uh, I wish, you know, this was just a T8, so it'd be T8 all the way around. And then the next thing um, is, like I said, the detent could be tuned a little stronger. However, I have videos showing you guys exactly how to tune a detent stronger, whether it's a liner lock or, or other locks. It's very, very easy. So that's why I can't really consider it too much of a negative because, you know, a lot of people might really like the way it's tuned. And it's not tuned bad. It's, if I was going to tune it any stronger, it'd be very, very little. Good, uh, good uh, sharpening tool and plunge grind. Very happy with that. So yeah, oh yeah, I'm also not a huge fan of the bead blast, but you know, at this price range, I'm not too mad at it. This is actually pretty cool. That's a good one.
Next is the Trivisa Delphinus. What a name, Delphinus. It has a very interesting blade shape. I actually kind of like it. It has a straight edge, then it clips down with this beautiful swedge. Very, very pokey. I can just see the utilitarianness or, you know, the usefulness of this blade shape. 154 CM blade steel, uh, multicolored G10 scales, and it kind of concaves in right here. And then it has this rock texture around the side. Nice little pop. And, uh, you know, it's pretty comfortable in the hand. I do feel the deep carry clip at times. It is reversible, but I can also adjust and make it super duper comfortable. Uh, the, the access to the lock bar is really well done. Very, very uh, comfortable. And then the thumb stud pla placement is perfect. Great detent. Great placement of the thumb studs. The, the front flipper also works super duper good. This is a great front flipper. They tune the detent perfectly for both deployments. Yeah, this is that's a good front flipper for sure. Um, all in all, you know, it, it's an interesting little knife. I can totally see, you know, the usefulness of it. You know, you can use it in any uh, grip and... You know, it's not a big knife. It's not super heavy or anything like that. It does have steel liners with, uh, yeah, it does have milling in there. So it does have some weight relieving. The only negatives I really have is T6s and then, you know, no sharpening choil or sorry, bad sharpening choil, I should say. They need to move that plunge grind, the end of it back here so that you have room to sharpen. This one will create a smile when you sharpen it. Uh, will that matter to the person buying it? Probably not. It's probably going to be a, to a work knife or something, you know, something that, you know, they can beat on, which, you know, that's cool. Now this next one, hear me out because it's actually way better than you're going to think. And I know what you're thinking when you see it. This is the Trivisa Virgo. We just went through this with another knife that's similar to this. However, this one's done very, very, very well. I'm, I actually really, really like this. Yes, I have my complaints about the overall look, which I'll get into, but my goodness, did they just do such a good job with this. This detent is a some of the best action I have felt on an affordable knife as far as the detent, the comfort of the flipper tab, the just everything about it. This is an action I want on high-end knives. Fantastic, like you can't fail it. Like I can sit here and try and it's like impossible to fail, unless if you cheat. <laughs> Such a good detent, man. And then you have this reverse flicking hole. That works good. You know, it's a little slippery. It's not the, it doesn't have the sharpest edge, but that'll also help for cutting. It's not gonna, you know, catch and create drag. Gorgeous blade shape. I freaking love this blade shape. Beautiful swedge. It's a drop point blade with a nice little recurve and it's not too much of a recurve. So this is a recurve that's going to give you the benefits without too much of the downfalls. You could totally sharpen it with a one inch stone on a regular fixed angled system. Since the tip drops down so much, man, this thing is such a useful blade shape. Now it has the 10 CR um, Damascus blade steel. Now here's the issue, and I know everybody's thinking the same thing. The Damascus next to the scroll work, this is a steel uh, full bolster with a steel liner lock coupled with this handle, which is normally found on high-end chef knives. So this is a natural material, a wood, mixed with a composite material, and you know, obviously uh, mixed together, <clears throat> making a very unique and also good looking handle design for fixed blades. Now, or for chef knives and fixed blades, fixed blades and chef knives, which are the same thing. But uh, on a folder, if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it right. And I think if this was a titanium frame lock bolster lock, right? A bolster titanium with a plain edge, a plain steel. So, you know, whatever steel, but not Damascus. This would actually look really good. This would look gorgeous. It would look like a good looking knife. But because it has this, you know, all this put together, it looks like every other cheap knife on Amazon. There's so many of these. And while this one's done very well, how do you separate it out of the pack? And who wants to have a knife that looks like the cheap crap on Amazon, even though it is really, really well done. Great access to the lock bar, very comfortable disengagement, super smooth, nice sound too. It has good acoustics. Um, the clip, 
you know, is another thing. It kind of cheapens it up. If this was a titanium mill pocket clip, it would look a lot better. It does have a steel backspacer. So, you know, it's got a little bit of weight, but it's not bad. Um, ergonomics are so good. I love these ergonomics. I would love to see this exact shape, exact everything except for the materials uh, on a premium knife. I think this is gorgeous. I think it would do very well. Uh, but these guys just have to know, like, this scroll work does not look good next to Damascus. Not on a budget knife. Like, it's like they're trying, it's like kind of like this. The gas station knives that are simulating the real thing. You know, it's kind of like the, the, the gas station knives that are trying to simulate Timascus. Anybody who knows Timascus can see that it's fake, right? Or like the fake carbon fiber or fake anything, you know? You, you don't want to simulate something. Now, this is not, I'm not saying this is fake, because this is real, but it just looks like it simulates that. Anyways, um, I think it's pretty cool. The negatives, obviously, I don't like the scroll work. Um, I'd rather see a plain steel on there, not Damascus. Um, I, I This handle material, I think, would do better on a premium knife that's also done premium all the way around. Um, the sharpening tool and plunge grind could be a little bit better. You know, you're going to get a couple sharpenings in, but... but yeah, it'll probably create a smile. With Damascus, you're not going to see it too much, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, the clip looks cheap, even though it is very comfortable in the hand and does work very well. But there's a lot of good here, man. It's just, you know, it is, it's, to a lot of people, it looks like a gas station knife. It looks, you know, ugly. Uh, but it has so much potential. Anyways, work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.